Let's play some music. All right, if you'll Welcome turn around. Welcome to my porch. I've never played on your porch. I know. When I was a kid, I had one thing on my mind, and that was music. I don't know why I chose bluegrass other than I was always around it. My grandparents were really into bluegrass music. They actually started a bluegrass show in Henryville. I would either be at their show or there were shows going on in Scottsburg and Madison, Indiana. I would say the first time I ever remember hearing bluegrass would have been at one of those. We've got a special guest instrumentalist with us this evening. When I was real little, I heard the local fiddle player play Orange Blossom Special. I heard that and then it was like I had to do it regardless. That's what did it for me. I don't know what it was. I guess all the different sounds that the fiddle made during that song that captivated me, but I was obsessed. If you were a fiddle player that could play Orange Blossom, and if I was around, I would be aggravating the hell out of you, <laughs> just trying to figure out how you play that. I think I asked so many of the same bands so many times, yeah, hey, do you have a record that has Orange Blossom on it? That's all I wanted to talk about. Well, we've got a fine fiddle player here on the left-hand side. What do you say, and there's been quite a few people in my life that have taken the time to make sure that I got a chance to hear the music that I needed to listen to. You know, all right, here's this Bill Monroe record. Here's Jim and Jesse. You know, here's Flat and Scruggs, the Stanley Brothers. Listen to the fiddle playing on these records and try to imitate that, which I am thankful for because that gave me basically the fundamentals. Not only was I learning new stuff, but I, I had an appreciation for traditional bluegrass that I don't know that I would have had otherwise. It's a very down-to-earth kind of music where there's a lot of chance to meet your heroes, people that you listen to on stage, and even get the opportunity to play music with them. When I met Doc Watson the first time, it was just like hearing Doc on an album, and to know that they were visually impaired, really, if I hadn't, heard or been aware of, of people like that. I don't, I don't know that I would have tried to go after music as a profession. I've got to say, I take my handicap kind of lightly. I don't know if you've had yours all your life or not, but I, yeah. I never could see. Or yeah, but I don't, I don't think of it too much. I mean, you know, 
There's some things I can't do, but I'm going to make do with what I can You'll do. You'll make do with what you have, son. Yes, you can. You've got a God-given talent that nobody can rob you. In 2006, I started my band called Michael Cleveland and Flame Keeper. The International Bluegrass Music Association has been really kind to us as a band and to be selected as Fiddle Player of the Year 12 times was quite an honor. In 2019, my album Tall Fiddler was nominated and won a Grammy, which uh, is still kind of hard to believe. We are thrilled to death to be here at the uh, Indiana School for the Blind. We're gonna play some bluegrass for y'all, and we don't know any other kind of music, so if you don't like bluegrass, you're out of luck. <laughs> All right, here we go. One, two, one. Looking back on it now and all the things that I've been fortunate enough to be able to do, and especially being a little kid and the people that I've been around and been able to play with. That's, man, I've, I've been pretty fortunate. Thank you all so much. No matter what style of music you play, I don't care if it's bluegrass or what, you need to be able to go back and, and find where things came from, why people play the way they do, for somebody else to be able to carry on the tradition, for it to be passed down. And uh, I hope people don't lose sight of that.